The Congress is wary of the fact that there could be Operation Lotus that would come into play. Uh, you just heard uh, D.K. Uh, Shivkumar stating that. Let me welcome joining me here on the program Abhishek Banerjee, well-known columnist Piyush Tamar, who's a research head of ETG. Good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for joining me here. Uh, we, we have a very short uh, discussion, short window for discussion, so we'll keep it quick. Mr. Banerjee, this palpable nervousness on the ground right now, ahead of the counting day, each side wary of the moves of the other. It should not be that way, actually. You know, one has to just wait for the figures to come out, but plan Bs are being talked about. What do you make of what is going to pan out on result day tomorrow? Yeah, I believe Karnataka has a very well-established pattern of anti-incumbency of rotating the government. And I think there is very little... Uh, it's more or less clear now that the Congress will have a clear lead or a clear majority. It's only about whether they'll get an exact majority or even a speech. I think that is the only part that is left. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's a, going to be a particular change in pattern at this point. Okay, you're saying there could be no change in pattern. It would be largely uh, what we are seeing in exit polls. Piyush Tanra, that should, you know, in a way validate you because... Times now, ETG has given uh, Congress Plus a very healthy figure of 113, just about covering the finishing line. And not just uh, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, brand, but the other po top pollsters have also given above 100, quite a few of them. So, unmissable energy towards the Congress party, would you say? What would you attribute this to? Of course. Uh, so, ma'am, from the day one when we started our field work and our survey, we noted that, you know, Congress was, from the day one, four months back, we found that Congress is well ahead. So all the campaigning and, you know, like, you know, like uh, Congress, uh, tall leaders like G.K. Shivakumar or Siddhar Amaya's, their campaigning and then BJP's campaigning. But still, we found that Congress was way ahead. So this was primarily due to the anti incumbency we found that in the state government. I would say that uh, there was a very huge anti incumbency. In fact, uh, the central, the, they call it a double engine circuit, they were, like, what we feel or we assess, okay, they were quite saved by the central government or in the name of uh, PM Modi. But it was like, you know, if not the center, they would have lost badly. Like uh, The numbers we are getting for a BJP, that is not so bad. Like Still, mm. they are in a good shape. Mm. We have found a huge anti-incumbency. And okay. uh, also, like after the uh, election also, we are getting, keep on getting ground inputs and we got, like as you've seen, like the uh, polling percentage was around 72 to 73%. So we got from the ground that Muslims have voted in en masse. They mm. came out of their houses, went to the polling booths, and they voted en masse. So that's a good, you know, that's a positive sign for Congress. Okay. These are two important factors. Abhishek Banerjee, you know what the problem is, like you also said, uh, the margin will be very, very crucial to watch out for. BJP is not very far behind. The gap can be closed by JDS. Is that what makes things very unpredictable, despite the unanimity on a lead for the Congress? Yeah, what I would say is that Karnataka is a very interesting state in the sense that the vote seat conversion is very precarious. Now, mm -hmm. everybody says that the opinion polls got it wrong last time, and that is true. But if you see them in terms of vote shares, they were not actually that far off the mark. There was this consensus that BJP is around 35% and Congress is around 37%. That was in the opinion polls last time. And it came out to 36 for the BJP and 38 for the Congress. Similarly, this time, the consensus among the exit polls is that BJP is somewhere around the 36% mark and Congress is around the 40% mark. But mm -hmm. the problem is that the vote seat conversion, and you can go back and check all the way till 1985. You look at the vote shares and you look at the seat share. They are almost two different universes because of the very peculiar political geography of Canada. So I would say, if you ask me for my exit poll, so to say, it's that six percent for the BJP, forty percent for the Congress. Nobody really knows what the seats are going to be. Yes, that's what makes it extremely fascinating, isn't it, Piyush Tanwar? Here is a state where both parties stand equal chance. It's it's like they're neck and neck. It's one factor versus the other. It's whether you are on the wrong side of anti-incumbency or not. But the fact is, this is vibrant democracy and. For the BJP, would you say the stakes are very high? The party wants to scale up from here. This is the only state they have in the south. If Karnataka slips from BJP, will that set back the party for 2024 and give an impetus uh, to the opposition to the Congress? Uh, yes. So first of all, this uh, vote share, what uh, Mr. Abhishek Banerjee was saying, so about the vote share, 
what we found is that as you see in the 2018 uh, bjp's vote share was 36% and congress vote share was 38% but the seats bjp 104 whereas congress was less 80 so that's a reason because congress is almost everywhere and bjp's uh, presence in south is very low southern karnataka where you have 61 seats there there also there's a fight between uh, Congress and JDS direct. There's no BJP's presence. So that 2% extra, they get it from there. So now coming to why there's a huge gap right now we are getting for Congress. First fact, BJP in their like in the Karnataka's entire election history, BJP never formed the government on their own, but Congress did. So Congress have that vote share and have that presence all over the state. So Congress actually can convert those seats. And right now, as I mentioned, that you know, Congress is actually, you know, uh, sailing through the anti-incumbency uh, on the BJP. Right. And first, and your second question is about 2024 election. Hmm. This is a very interesting fact about Karnataka. So here, the voters are very clear. They have a very clear mindset that they are voting. Like, let's say if you're going for urban local bodies or serpents, they know, you know, on what parameters or on what basis they are voting. If it is a hmm. uh, MLA election, they know on what parameter they are vo voting. And if it is a national or a Lok Sabha election, they know that. They have that clarity. Very informed hmm. voter. Okay. So it won't be a setback for BJP because still we we got it that BJP, you know, when when we ask like you know if, if, if there is a assembly election, which party will you vote for, which party will you support? They usually say right. I support Congress. That's support a very BJP. good note, uh, in fact, to end the program with. And I'm glad you said it, Mr. Piyush Thavar, that here is a state where you have an informed electorate, and that is what it takes to choose the right people sometimes because uh, you know uh, the communal card or the caste calculations. More than that, you know, whether the netas who were elected have done their job, if that is the basis for the electorate in exercising their franchise, I think it's uh, it's rather commendable. Thank you so much for joining us. If I'm afraid I'm completely out of time. Abhishek Banerjee and Piyush Navar, thank you so much for joining us today. That's uh, a wind up on the discussion, but let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more.